welcome everyone and um, yeah, thank, thank you very much for, for coming along today. Uh, it's great to, to see everyone um, and, and look forward to catching up with you in the breaks and things as, as we go through today. As Christian said, the, the first session we have here really just tries to start with, um, a, I guess, some of the theory behind genomics. So this is the, the kind of science class, if you like, for the, the first session before we start talking for the rest of the day about the application and, um, of genomics within a, a beef breeding program. So what I, what I plan to cover, we've got a pretty short, sharp session here, just 15 to 20 minutes, um, where we want to go through and just talk about, well, what is genomics? What's DNA? What's a gene? What's a gene marker? What's this thing called an SNP or a, or a SNP? And the reason for us covering that is, is to give you, I guess, an understanding of how does this genomic technology that's available to us now to apply within Angus beef breeding operations, how does it actually work? And also cover off on some of the terminology that we use when we start talking about genomics so that you have some idea of, of what we're actually talking about when we start talking about what a SNP is and, and those type of things. So. This will be, as I said, I'll forewarn you, some of it is, is quite theoretical um, and it might remind you of when you were back in science class, but um, it'll cover off some pretty important concepts. So you've come along today to a, a session on the um, application of, of genomics, the opportunities to apply genomics in a modern Angus beef enterprise. If we start right at the start, what's genomics? And I guess one of the things that I, I get sick of listening to myself up here, so I'll put the question to you, if I came along to you as was buying a bull from you or um, you're running a commercial operation or just coming along and having a yarn and I said to you, I've heard a lot about genomics. What is it? What's it all about? How might you um, answer them? If we try and describe genomics, really what we're talking about is a term given to describe a range of DNA-based technologies. So the first thing is we're dealing with technologies that are based around an animal's DNA concerned with the structure, function, evolution and mapping of genomes, with genomes being the complete set of genes present in an organism or, or an animal. So if I put that into to layman terms for you, basically it's technologies that inform us about an animal's genetics by going in and analysing an animal's DNA. And what we talk about inform us about an animal's genetics, that can be on several fronts. So as we'll talk about the application throughout the rest of the day, that can be across things like parent, its pedigree, um, whether it's carrying genetic disorders, whether it's got favourable traits for, or genes for important production traits. So it's really just, if we look at genomics at, at the top level, we're looking at analysing an animal's DNA and informing us about what genetics are they're carrying. Does that make sense, everyone? So the next obvious question in this is we've got genomics analysing an animal's DNA What's DNA? What's it analysing? So if we start to work through this in a bit more detail, so I'll ask you, what, what does DNA stand for? Does anyone know what, if we expand it out? <laughs> Sam, front, front and centre, gold star for Sam, straight up. So, deoxyribonucleic acid. It doesn't really inform us too much about what um, DNA is, unless we've got a bit of a... A chemist degree in here. Where is it? Where's DNA? If you look out in the paddock and a mob of heifers, where's, where's their DNA? It's in their flesh, isn't it? In their flesh? It is. We break that down a little bit more. Blood. In their blood? It's in their blood as well. In all their cells. In all their cells, exactly. So if we look here, we've got a heifer standing in the paddock, Angus heifer. If we start to put her under the microscope, if you like, or start to break it down, then she is effectively made up of cells. And as you've said, there is a range of different cells. So there's, there's, tissues, there's your tissue cells, there's blood cells, there's hair cells. But constant to all those different cells is each cell has a thing called a cell nucleus. And within the cell nucleus, we have these things called chromosomes. And a beef animal has 30 different chromosomes. They inherit, and we say pairs of, of chromosomes, 30 pairs of chromosomes, because we inherit one copy of a chromosome from a sire and one from, from our dam. So the same as us, we inherit one from mother and one from, one from father. And the chromosomes are just bundles of DNA. 
So if you look and say, well, where, where's an animal's DNA? It's effectively, you've got an animal made up of cells. Each cell has a nucleus. The nucleus contains chromosomes, and the chromosomes are basically bundles of the animal's DNA. Why is DNA important? What, what role does it play? The foundation of the animal. So it effectively, it contains the instructions for making that living organism or that animal. Or if you like, in a bit more layman terms, basically it's its genetic blueprint. So it contains all its genes, and those genes determine how that animal functions. So it determines what colour eyes it's got, what colour coat it's got, whether it marbles in the right environment and all those type of things. But basically, it contains the instructions for how that animal operates. Now to get right into some more science for you, to keep going, delving into this, if we delve down and actually have a look at the structure of DNA. And as I said, the reason for looking at this is to give you an understanding of how a lot of these genomic technologies actually work. So if we go through this together, first of all, the thing you'll notice when you look at the structure of DNA is it's got this unique double helix kind of shape. So every, everywhere you see DNA, you, you tend to see different images of this double helix shape. And that's just due to the unique kind of chemical composition of, of how, it, how it's made up, that it forms into this shape. But if we work through it, the first thing is DNA is made up of these two strings of what we call nucleotides. Now there, there, there's nothing too, too important about that. But the important part, when we start looking at genomic technology, is that the strings of nucleotides are bound together by these things called nitrogenous base pairs, or base pairs. And there are four different types of nitrogenous bases. So there's, you know, I may not pronounce these correctly, but adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Or when you normally see any kind of material, documentation around DNA, they're normally just A, T, C, and G. And the, the, the unique part of their, their chemical makeup is A is always bind to T's and C is always bind to G's. So you've got these two strings of nucleotides bound together by these nitrogenous base pairs. And if you think about an animal's DNA, it's effectively just a long string of around 3 billion nitrogenous base pairs. And it's the sequence of these nitrogenous base pairs, these A, T, C's and G's, which sets the genetic code, basically sets the genetics of that animal. And importantly, the sequence differs between animals. So you can think about the, the sequence of these nitrogenous base pairs, these A, G's, T's, C's and A's, whatever, in there, they set the genetic code and it's the sequence of them that's important and the sequence differs between animals and going in, all our genomic technologies, all they're actually doing is going in and analysing this nitrogenous base pair sequence of an animal. So it's going in, looking at animals' DNA, looking at these nitrogenous base pair sequence and then informing us based on what we know about the, the, the different um, the base pair sequence and how important it is at that particular location in an animal's DNA, informing us about an animal's genetics. We've said genomics is analysing an animal's DNA. We've been through DNA. And we've said DNA basically contains all the genes or, or the genetic blueprint of an animal. So if we keep moving through our, our kind of definitions, what's a gene? There's a lot of people here selling bulls. Ultimately, you're selling genes out to the commercial industry. What are you selling? So I'll give you, in this context, I suppose, we'll break it down and give it a little bit more scientifically in terms of relating it back to that structure of the DNA. So this is a, a similar type of structure, I suppose. You've, you've got, looking at DNA a slightly different way, but same thing. The chromosome, these two strings of nucleotides, and then these, the nitrogenous base pairs binding them together. What a gene is, is it a particular spot within an animal's DNA? It's that this base pair sequence actually codes for a specific product or basically contains the instructions for a particular attribute of the animal. So in this case, it'll be that depending on what an animal has in this base pair sequence at this spot in its animal's DNA, if it was a gene associated with coat colour, 
it would determine basically or set the instruction for whether that animal has a black coat colour or a red coat colour. Or if it was a gene associated with improved marbling, it would be that that sequence, depending on what that sequence of base pairs that, that animal has within its DNA at that particular location, is associated with either improved or, or decreased marbling. And it's estimated across an animal's genome, with a, with a mapping of the beef genome, that there's between 22,000 to, to 27,000 genes in an animal. Now I say estimated because as we go and we start to learn more, I suspect that number may, may change, but um, at the moment it's 22 to, to 27,000. So the next part of this is, well, what's a gene marker? So we've looked at what a, what a gene is. The other thing we, we talk about in this space a lot is, well, what's a gene marker? So in this space, I'll, I'll give it to you again. Again, we'll, I'll give it to you along the lines of the structure of the DNA. When we were looking at a gene, it was a particular sequence at a particular spot in an animal's DNA which actually coded for a specific product or resulted in a particular attribute. This is a situation where we, we don't know whether it actually is responsible for coding for that product, but we just know that a particular base pair sequence in a particular spot is associated with differences in performance for, or attributes of an animal. So it might be we know that if an animal at this particular spot has a T, C, A, T and G, the animals tend to have higher marbling. It might not be associated within the, that sequence may not be within a gene that actually is responsible for increased marbling, or, or it may be. We don't know exactly what that T, C, A, T and G does, but we just know if animals have it, they tend to have higher marbling. So it becomes a marker. It's not the gene itself, but it's just a marker for the, an improvement in that particular trait. This is where most of our genomic technology is kind of looking at, particularly for our, for our production traits. So when genomic technology first started to come along, we thought we'd be able to go in, analyse an animal's DNA, work out what all the genes were and, and, and understand exactly how the DNA functioned. Over time, they've discovered that that, that wasn't that simple. And so now the, the technology is really focusing on just identifying these markers. We don't quite know why, or we don't understand the underlying biology of, of what they actually do, but we know that if animals have them, they're associated with differences in performance. As DNA technology now gets more and more powerful and, and cheaper to, to genotype animals, go in and analyse their, their, their DNA, um, then they're starting to move back to actually trying to understand and identify what the genes are. Certainly all the technology we have available to us today is looking at, at gene markers. And one of the common forms of gene markers that we have is this thing called single nucleotide polymorphism, or SNP. Have you heard that term before, SNP? Do you know what it is? So a SNP is, if you look here, we've got, just to explain this, first of all, it's, the SNP is basically the most common form of gene marker which we use in, in Angus today. And as we talk about our different applications, we'll talk about the different number of SNPs that are involved in the different tests. So if we look here, we've basically got two, the DNA for two particular animals. Again, you've got these nitrogenous bases in the middle here, binding the animals, basically binding the two nuclear, strings and nucleotides together. And what a SNP is, is you'll see that in most cases, the animals have got exactly the same base pair. But in this particular location, they have a different base pair. So this animal has a C and a G, and this animal has a T and an A. So it's a difference in a single nucleotide. Basically a single base pair difference and a polymorphism being, being difference. Um, so a SNP is just where this one nucleotide is different. This base pair is different. And that basically going in and starting to look at different SNPs is the basis for most of our technologies. So our parentage panels are, are all based on about 140 different SNPs, the base panels. So they're going in, when you, when you send off a, a DNA sample to, to get a parentage panel done, it'll go in and analyse that animal's DNA and identify at 140 different spots what the, the base pair that animal's carrying. If you're doing a, say if you were doing an HD50K, a, a Zoetis HD50K in the past for the, the production traits, then that was looking at 54,000 different SNPs. So it was going in and looking at 54,000 different spots. 
Some of the, the work the beef CRC did was up at 800,000 SNPs. So all the different panels and things DNA technology is looking at, basically that we're looking at today, all look at this SNP kind of form of gene marker, and it's just a different number of SNPs that, that, that they're looking at. Okay, so that's the end of the, the theory. As I said, that was your science class to, to start off with, but I think it was hopefully important to, to cover some of the, the theory behind how this technology works before we start applying it, and also cover off on some of that terminology um, that we'll no doubt put into conversation throughout the rest of the day. So just to refresh on, on some of the take-home messages, first of all, in terms of the, where the animal's DNA or, or what it is, we have a heifer made up of cells. Each cell has a nucleus. Those, um, within the cell nucleus, we have 30 pairs of chromosomes, and the chromosomes are made up of, of DNA. So when you send the DNA sample away, you're basically there going in extracting that, that DNA out of the cell nucleus. The DNA is important because it contains the genes or the genetic blueprint of that animal. And when we look at the, the basis for our genomic technology, we have the chromosomes with the two strings of nucleotides bound together by these nitrogenous base pairs. And the sequence of those base pairs differs between animals. And going in and analysing the sequence that an animal carries of those base pairs is the basis for all our genomic technologies today. 